Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be about the brain fog that you can struggle with or be left with after a narcissistic relationship and that narcissist can be anyone in your life. It can be a friend, a parent, a sibling, a partner, a work colleague, a boss. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you overcome narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. So when it comes to a narcissist, one of their many manipulation tactics is fear. They intimidate us and they can Im intimidate us in many manipulative covert ways that we don't even recognise they're intimidating us. We question whether their threat is real or whether their threat is perceived. One of the main reasons narcissists intimidate people is so that people fear them. So people go into that natural survival instinct of fawn and start walking on eggshells around the narcissist. A narcissist can stand over you, they can talk down to you, they can talk over you, they can throw things, they can break things, they can punch things, they can use those covert threats of I wouldn't if I was you or those threats of how are you going to be able to afford to live without me and this is a real fear. Part of being human is a need for shelter, a need for water, a need for food, a need for air and when someone is threatening to take that shelter away from you, it's a very real threat that causes fear within you. When they come at you with, you'll have nothing without me, you'll never see the children again, it causes that build up of panic within you. Narcissists isolate you and they don't just isolate you from friends or from family, they isolate you from your hobbies, they isolate you from your dreams, they isolate you from your passion. So you feel like you're worth less than you actually are. You question who you are as a person. You fear being yourself through the criticism and the judgment you receive from the narcissist. Narcissists will go as far as hiding your car keys so that you can't get to work, blocking doorways, causing those arguments before you go out. Some do resort to aggression. Some will be spitting slapping. There are many ways a narcissist puts that fear into you, which causes you to go into that survival mode of fawn and walking on eggshells to please the narcissist, not realising that no matter what you do for them, due to their sense of entitlement, due to their lack of empathy, it will never be enough for them. They are putting that fear within you so that they can control you and that fear causes us so many issues. It can cause us fatigue from overanalyzing everything, overthinking everything, ruminating about everything, thinking about what we could have said differently, what we could have done differently, how we could approach them better, how we could get them to understand, how we can avoid that argument. So even when you're sleeping at night, if you are sleeping at night, you're not actually sleeping because your brain is switched on, your brain is in overdrive trying to work out what is happening. When you are in fatigue, when you are drained, when you are tired, when you are no longer running at 100%, you can become forgetful. So when a narcissist is gaslighting you with, I never said that, and that never happened, you're losing your mind you stop looking at them and you start looking at yourself and think, yeah, I did forget that. Oh, I am forgetting things. Oh, maybe I am losing my mind. Maybe I am the one going crazy. Because you're no longer chasing your dreams, because your dreams have been sabotaged, you can feel like you're becoming a failure and 
you can feel like you don't deserve any better. So when they're coming at you with, you'll never be anything without me, you believe them rather than seeing that they are the ones that are sabotaging you. They are the ones that are draining you to fill their own self-esteem up. Obligation. Narcissists do very little. They do as little as they can. They love bomb, they idolise, they mirror, they future fake. They do all they can to sell you an illusion, to feed you that false hope, to keep you hooked. And every time you think that something's not quite right and speak out, they get to you through obligation. They come at you with, after all I've done for you, to make you feel obligated into staying and helping them, not seeing that they are destroying you. And with those obsessive thoughts that are running around your mind, trying to work out what's happening, trying to work out, is it them? Is it you? With their gaslighting, telling you that it's you, with how you're feeling within yourself, trying to take care of the house, trying to take care of yourself, trying to take care of them, trying to take care of the bills, trying to take care of the business, trying to take care of your parents, not wanting to walk away from the people who raised you, needing that career so that you've got an income coming in to support your family, not wanting to upset the boss. You become obligated into staying and helping them, not realising they are destroying you. And those obsessive thoughts trying to work through the daily life struggles with every all the games there throwing you away but hiding from you becomes very confusing and you are left with that brain fog. Guilt is another one that narcissistic people use to keep you trapped in the dynamics of the relationship. They're going to make you feel guilty. Even if they started a situation off, they're going to go all out to make you feel guilty. A narcissist might not want their grandchildren in their home because whatever runs through a narcissist mindset but they do not want their grandchildren in their home and they will point out they don't want the grandchildren in their home and then they'll be oh no i, I couldn't possibly come round to your home even though they're wanting to come round to your home they're wanting you to look after them they might have never let their parents into their home however they'll expect you to let them into yours they may have always gone to their parents home but they'll expect you to allow you you to allow them to come into yours they will not want the grandchildren at their house and if you start to take a stand on this and just think mm, this just feels a bit wrong i don't see where you're coming from, I can't understand the issue. They're going to then start finding ways to rationalise their thought process, to rationalise where they're doing something, why they are doing something. And then if you do invite them up for a grandchild's birthday or something, if you invite them up, the narcissist, a covert narcissist is going to go, oh, but do you really want me there? Oh, what do the children really want? To make you feel bad for them, to make you empathise with them, to make you forget about the fact that they don't want you in their home. They only want you when it suits themselves. But at the same time, they want to guilt trip you. Narcissistic parents who want this place as things like this. Life's about give and take. However, when the parents were never there for you, you are not obligated to be there for them. And they may go all out with the guilt trips after all I've done for you. And you have to question what they actually did for you. Because more often than not, whatever a narcissist does for you, there is an ulterior motive behind what they've done for you. They want something in return from you. Nothing they do is out of the goodness of their own heart for you and this is all in their best interest. 
So many narcissists are going to guilt trip you, which again, it's going to cause that confusion within your mind. Oh, they're not really that bad. Perhaps they're having a bad time. Perhaps they're struggling with anxiety. Perhaps they're struggling with life. I ought to be a bit kinder to them. Maybe it is me that's the problem. Perhaps I should be nicer. If only I, and it causes that rumination again. And we begin to step away from who they are as a person and question who we are, especially when it comes to a covert narcissist that is guilt tripping you on a regular basis to get their needs met. Their pity plays pulls on your heartstrings and because you do care about them, it's very difficult to walk away from them. And what you have to remember is if that was the other way around, they would be very quick to walk away from you. Life is about give and take. If somebody is not willing to give, they shouldn't expect to take. However, narcissists expect to take. If they're not willing to give, you do not have to give to those unwilling to give to you, especially when it leaves you in a state of frustration, when it leaves you in a state of anger, when it leaves you in a state of confusion because of the very things they are doing to you. When it comes to the brain fog, when it comes to fatigue, when it comes to physical illnesses, you should always seek support from a medical profession just to make sure there isn't any other underlying health conditions there. When it comes to dealing with narcissistic people, the stress from that relationship releases chemicals which affect our blood pressure, they affect our physical health, they affect our psychological health, they affect our emotional health. And when we're feeling drained, when we're in a state of hypervigilance, when we become emotionally reactive and when they push our buttons, we start to question and blame ourselves more. We start to ruminate on whether we're the narcissist or not, not realising it's the environment that we are in and that we need to step out of that environment. When you don't see what's happening to you, you don't know what's happening to you. When you don't know what's happening to you, you don't understand what's happening to you. More often than not, people are raised by narcissistic parents, so they accept behaviour as normal that they should have never accepted. We have to have that radical acceptance of who they are as a person. We have to stop looking inwards at ourselves at some point. It's good to look inwards, it's good to own your own mistakes, this is what narcissistic people don't do. But when you're being manipulated by a narcissist at some point you have to stop questioning yourself and you have to start questioning them, not directly to them. Narcissists and questions, you get the word salad, the gaslighting, the denial, the blame shifting, the silent treatments. Don't question the narcissist. I mean, instead of questioning you, questioning your mind, what game are they playing? What are they trying to get from me? What are they trying to achieve from this? What started this situation off? Oh, they started the situation off. Therefore, they're not going to fix the situation. They started the situation off because they wanted to create the drama. They wanted to create the conflict. They wanted to create the chaos. They wanted to create that confusion, that fear, that obligation and that guilt. Then we have to lower our expectations of that person lower our expectations of their level of awareness, lower our expectations of their level of understanding, lower our expectation of their level of compassion, lower our expectations on them delivering on those promises because narcissistic people do manipulate through false hope and sometimes we have to let go of that belief, of that hope that it could be different and the radical acceptance, accept it for what it is, accept it for who they are and not who they show themselves to be in the illusion when they are idolising and love bombing and manipulating, lowering our expectations of them because whenever we think oh, if, if we just give them another chance, if we just explain it to them like this, once we are aware of what they're doing, we feel even more annoyed with ourselves. We feel more angry with ourselves. We feel more hurt with ourselves. And we feel more let down 
because they showed us time and time again who they are as a person it's difficult walking away from people you care for however it's far better in the long run than staying with someone who is using you for their own gains at some point we have to get our standards back we have to work on our belief system we have to work on our values and we have to raise our standards and then we have to stick to our boundaries because when your boundaries are in place narcissistic people will do the walking for you because they're not getting their entitlement met from you they're not getting their supply from you so they will actually walk from you they might reappear and try time and time again but as long as your boundaries are firm narcissists will tend to do the walking for you not always when dealing with these kinds of people the best is always no contact because when you do go limited contact if you're not in a strong enough place they can reel you back in through fear through obligation and through guilt so no contact is always the best if it's not possible it needs to be extreme limited contact and grey rock please add in the comments any advice you have on this video that might help somebody reading through I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the description. I do have several online courses available which will also be in the description. These are just step-by-step -step guides to give you more understanding of what you've been through because once we have the understanding we have the power to move away from our past and start creating our future. Many do it alongside, they learn about the disorder they learn about what they've been through while creating a better future for themselves so go out there and start creating the days that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day bye